Knott's Rockcast is an association with regular riot. Welcome to Knott's Rockcast, the Knott's Alternative Scene Podcast. Here is your host, Jeff O'D, bringing you everything knots and rocks. And welcome to you, Knots Rockers, for NRC 009 over YouTube. If you've seen the picture that goes with the video, then you'll know who I'm talking to today. So I don't need to introduce him. Well, I will, but yeah. Anyway, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ding the bell if you want to know about all the upcoming podcasts that are going to be released on this channel. Oh, okay. Right, let's try that again. (laughs) Sorry about that. Welcome to the podcast today, where I've got Robert J. Anderson, as he is on Facebook. He is the manager of the Tap and Tumbler, the pub on the road of... I can never remember this road. Wallaton Street. Wallaton Street. Hi, everyone. Waves, waves, waves. <laughs> the three people that are out there listening. The three Before people. I'm sure, I'm sure we're going to get more than that. I'm <laughs> listening to this. Um, do you want to introduce yourself a bit more? Yeah, um, been here for um, a year almost. Well, be a year to the day on the 1st of March. I stood behind the bar, moved down on the 26th of Feb. Uh, background is a 10 year stint at the Black Bull which is a rock bar in Edinburgh um, been a bar manager been in bar work probably about the mid 90s I'll head all my days I can remember that's a good thing to know yeah <laughs> you know if, uh, you metal till I die effectively at the end of the day I uh, can't see me you know bidding off to so like, start busting some moves uh, and a hip hop kind of fall downy kind of way, so uh, break dances. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, about that, really, for our work kind of background. Um, Do you want to explain how you came to be the manager of the Tap and Tumbler? Um, it was it was one of those things. I was sort of just bored one day, flicking through uh, media, Facebook, and uh, I followed uh, the social media side for for Green King. And uh, Carol Watson, one of our dear friends up in Scotland who works in HR, um, had put a post up saying um, manager required for Rock Bar in Nottingham. Um, so I kind of mulled it over for about, I don't know, seconds. Um, put a, a, a kind of tongue-in-cheek comment on the, on the Facebook post and uh, Carol said kind of do it go for it so i did uh went home and said to elaine my significant other i've applied for a job in nottingham and the rest as they say is history oh wow that's very interesting because i must admit (laughs) the first time that i saw you it was a breath of fresh air because as we talked before the the rumors that were going around about (laughs) <laughs> places when they change hands everyone gets a little panicky they're a little worried that they're going to get someone that's not going to do the place justice and I think you really have um, <clears throat> I kind of expected the uh, uh, response that I got I think there were some stairways there might even still be some stairways you know you, you can't please everyone um, I do what I do um, I run the bar the way I run the bar and I, it's no different to, to up in Edinburgh um, but there was always going to be the naysayers the doubters and the, oh he's, he's come down here to change it into a wine bar and I'm like you know I think after a little while I put a Facebook post up saying well have you seen me right you know, wine bar, really? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it was vegan wine bar, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'd very possibly, I mean, vegan seems to be the way to go just now, but meh. Yeah, well, fair enough. But I do, I must admit, since you've had the makeover, yeah, it's it's lifted the place ten, ten, tenfold, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely love it. I mean, it, it's quite different to any other refurbishment I've had in the past where this is the first time the company have actually sat and said, what do you want? 
you know, as, as somebody yeah. who's actually managing the business. Um, they basically di- deliberately bypassed my boss, my, my branch development manager, and said, right, what do you want? So I told them what I wanted, and uh, they kind of gave me that. So reasonably speaking at the moment, the tap and tumbler is kind of unfinished, so they had the designer in, did everything the way it is, but it was a case of then they say, right, now it's up to you to make your mark on it, you know, add things to it, put other things up on the wall, you know, stickers back up, posters back up, and just give it that kind of, you know, bar for the people kind of thing, you know? Yeah, because I must admit, when Craig Sharp Weir was here, there was so much on the walls. It, just the collection of stuff. So you're going to be doing that again, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've kind of tried to keep as much as I could uh, of stuff that could go back up in the walls. Yeah. You know, I mean, just because you have a makeover doesn't mean that you throw away your history, you know? I mean, so we still have that that painting that, that um, Tracy Dykesy did for uh, with, you know, I think it was Tommy, Craig, Mole... Glenn and one or two others. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you don't throw away your history. I mean, it's always going to be there, so that's back up. And a lot of the other stuff's still there, but it's just a case of just evolving it now to whatever it's going to be for however long, you know, we can keep this going. Okay. that's, that's I think that's absolutely commendable because, again, people lose so much history sometimes with refurbs. And as I said... I think it's really raised the place tenfold, and you have kept everything just brilliant. It's yeah, I mean, it, it's it's about the people who spend their money in here. At the end of the day, yeah, you know. So for me, what was it to do? It was to create more space for them, to make it more comfortable for them, aesthetically pleasing, without being over the top. And I think the designers did that brilliantly. So taking the benches out under the windows, I asked for that. You know, and I mean, what they've done with the drop-down tables yeah. works perfectly. Um, I must admit, coming in on a Saturday night, it's a lot easier to get from the corner of the bar yeah. to the toilet. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to go biggest outside thing that I've to noticed go back inside to go along from one end of the pub to the other. Yeah, but yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, you know, things like taking the carpets. Uh, I mean, who needs carpets in a rock bar? You know, I mean, <laughs> that's quite a funny thing because Jason down at the Sal is trying to get carpets in the oh, cell. <laughs> yeah, good luck with the cleaning bill every month. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's quite... I think it's quite brilliant that the two places have gone two different ways. I just, you know, I mean, it's it's a place people want to come and enjoy themselves. You know, you've got the hijinks and all the rest of it, and not every drop of liquid's going to stay in a glass, you know? I yeah. Mean, yeah. It's easier to sort of like just wipe it up rather than sort of like wait till it starts to smell a bit stale and then get the cleaners in, you know? I completely agree with you working in bars myself. <laughs> yes, That's... I mean, you know, for me that was a no-brainer. Carpets, out. Yeah. Um, and the rest, you know, I mean, like I say, it was all down to the designers and I think they've done a, a fantastic job. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. What I like to ask is for a quote of inspiration from your time in Knots, but seeing as you haven't been here that long, do you want to just give us a quote of inspiration that you'd say? Um, yeah, set your standards low. Fail to achieve them, and you're never, ever going to be disappointed in life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I completely agree with that one. I really do. That's, I, the amount of times that I tell people that my standards are low, simply because I know I can achieve slightly above sometimes, but if it doesn't happen, then I'm not disappointed. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, if you're your benchmark of low standards, you know, I mean, uh, it will vary from one person to another. Someone else's low standards can be far away and above, above and beyond your own. So, I mean, eh, it's a bit tongue-in-cheek, but, you know, I mean, uh, it's one I've, I've had uh, in my head decades and decades and decades. And another one is that, that fate shall never be tempted because as soon as you do, you know it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, but no, yeah, yeah. Set your standards low, fail to achieve them. Brilliant. I'm actually going to skip the next couple of questions because it says... Uh, where are you orig- Are you originally from Knott's? But you've already told us yeah. you're from Edinburgh. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I must admit, the one thing that I did want to point out was when we were speaking in the bar about you coming on the podcast, was um, 
Paul Smith was in the bar at the same time and he said, oh, maybe you should have subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe, maybe someone doing, you know, um, the hand signally one. What's that again for the deaf? Yeah, uh, signing for the deaf on a podcast. That that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, considering <laughs> there is no video. Yeah, um, uh, the other one, fingers and a knot, raise his hands, expansive. Yeah, I mean that that'd be great. That works really well. Signing. <laughs> cool. Right. So, how did you get started in the pub trade then? Uh, I was um, studying to. Uh, I was doing business and for te- information technology. Um, had a mortgage. Had to pay bills, so I had two bar, two bar jobs um, to to make ends meet. Yeah, and uh, ended up working about forty eight hours a week on the bar, needing to do thirty hours a week kind of study time. You know, finishing work, getting in at two three o'clock in the morning, then having to be up at you know what seven o'clock in the morning to go to go to study and try and have to find some time in between. To, I actually do some of the coursework, so kind of it fell by the wayside, um, and I just dropped from from one from the, sorry from the two bar jobs to to one bar job doing full time, and just worked my way up from there. Just thought if this is what I'm going to do, then throw myself into it. However, um, I've still no idea what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> Fair play. I <laughs> I still don't know what I want to be when I grow I'm up. I've got a clue. Honestly, I mean. I think, and I think it's just being lucky now and having a, a gone through all the places I've worked, you know, and you sort of you turn up and you've got the elevator music in the background and, you know, everything, you know, just all these sort of nice, shiny kind of locally kind of bars or whatever with normal, well, I say normal, you know, I mean, you're, 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 you're general people who don't go to rock bar type people. Yeah. You know, and then you sort of spend over 10 years in a rock bar and it's just like, it, it doesn't feel like a job, so... No, you know you ha- surrounded by the music you love, with people you should really get on with, you know who all have a kind of like light mind towards a lifestyle, I suppose. You yeah. Know? So I mean that's why I can say you know work out one day what I do when I do when I grow up because I mean for me this is just like being at school. Yeah, it's you know? fun every day though. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. I must admit it's. I'd have liked to have stayed in the nightclub industry, but my health just wasn't accepting it. Starting at 8 in the evening and finishing at 8 in the morning and then going over to Weatherspoons for breakfast and a pint yeah. just wasn't wasn't for me. But to find a place to settle into that works for you. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> when I managed the Black Bull for about two and a half years, almost three, I think, um, I managed, there was a, a, a club underneath it that Green King also owned, um, and I managed the two for a while. Because they kept on going through managers and managing a club, it's, it's just brutal. Yeah. You know, I mean, like you say, I mean, I'd be finishing at four o'clock in the morning, driving home, getting up three hours later to come back to work again, you know, it's just meh. Yeah. Not fun. No, not at all. Um, how have you found settling in to this place? <clears throat> it's fine. I was kind of like, um, so when I came down for the interview, I'd, I'd never been in Nottingham in my entire life. Oh, right. Off. Um, so you know you have you have this kind of, and I, I I had no idea what a Nottingham accent was like, an East Midlands accent. I'm like, what's it going to be like? Is there going to be a language barrier, so yeah. to speak? You know, I mean, like if you went to, it'd be the same as going up to Aberdeen or the northwest coast of Scotland, where you just like you need a translator. Yeah. But I came down and so like speaking to people, and it's just like, oh, pretty straightforward. Um, the people have been absolutely fantastic. Um, very friendly, very accommodating. Um, I've absolutely zero regrets coming down here, and I think that's the nature of being lucky enough to to meet some, you know, genuinely open, honest individuals who, you know, welcome you in with open arms. Possibly, probably because you know you're the manager of their favourite gaff, but you know, yeah. um, you know, but there's there's an honesty and sincerity behind it as well, you know. So I mean. Um, genuinely, genuinely blessed that you know I've, I've met a lot of great people down here. Walking through the city, not had any issues, not had any trouble, any bother. You know, I mean, you, you hear all the stories about crime and you know knife crime, gun crime, all the rest of it. Not seen anything, not heard anything, only really encountered any of that stuff. And you know, 
because of the media, you know, the news or newspapers or whatever. But yeah, it's it's been really good. They like a good story, don't they? Seems and to it, be. Yeah, and they keep saying if it, no news is good news, sort of thing. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, they have to kind of they have to kind of report the things that are going on when it comes to crime. But no, it's 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 been fine, absolutely fine. Um, should be here for a while, I think. Oh, that's. I think that is absolutely brilliant because, as you know myself, I come from down south. Down south. Down south. And um, yeah, coming up here, exactly, exactly what you said. I, I found everyone was friendly. They were open. I like my path to actually getting into Nottingham was. I first of all moved to Mansfield, then I ended up in Tuxford, and then Ollerton. And then found I was getting on the Sherwood Arrow, which takes an hour and 40 minutes to get from Ollerton to Nottingham. So I couldn't really stay late for the late nights and stuff. And I, just as you said, everybody was so friendly, so chatty, cheerful. They used to call it Miss Saturday Jolly to come up and yeah. visit the tap and visit the cell. I, I think um, staying in the city centres helped. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can just like walk. I can walk out the door, and I'm in the city centre. Effectively, you know, I mean, everything's at hand. So I think that's helped, and I mean, it's helped with the uh, mother half Elena. I mean, she's a very, very short bus journey to her job as well. So, it, it's pretty cool. Oh, that's brilliant. So, what compelled you to be into the alternative scene then? Oof. Um, I don't. I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it's just like one of these ones. Um, some of the earliest bands I ever remember listening to, uh, you know, in the 1970s, as you know, a very, very young kid would have been likes of Slade, Susie Quattro, uh, and and stuff like that. Um, and then, kind of going up through school, I had to see it was kind of Abba and Abba and Adam and the Ants and stuff like that, but still had this kind of thought towards <clears throat> these other bands and I went to high school and um, I don't know if it was just a case of some of the guy, you know, kids I was hanging around with already into ACDC and Black Sabbath, Led yeah. Zeppelin Deep Purple and all this thing, give that a go, gave it a go, like ooh, you know, and never really looked back, I mean I think there was one time since then I think I tried not to like metal Lasted about two months. You tried not to like metal. Yeah, I think. I think <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's just because your peer groups change and they're yeah. listening to something else. So you think, oh, I've got a fan here. So you tried that, you know, and they like, no. <clears throat> so back, back to, back to the denims and, uh, you know, and sneakers and uh, back to listening to the metal, you know. Yeah. Um, and that that that's generally about the only thing I can think of is just this, the peer group I ended up in. Yeah. Um. I'm, I'm, I know a lot of people, it's either peer group or it's parents and stuff like that, isn't it? Definitely but not parents for me because they were like Tammy Wynette, you know, uh, classical. Maybe classical will lead into, because, I mean, you know, if you look at the likes of Metallica, what they did with um, uh, S&M, um, they, you know, I mean, embraced it and, you know, the whole orchestration thing fitted in very well. So, I was, you know, I mean, being brought with classical music was maybe a, subconscious way into the metal yeah possibly possibly it's it's funny personally from my point of view because i got into metal when i was pri in primary school so when i went up to secondary school i the only people that i could hang around with was the grungers into uh, nirvana and stuff like that so i took on a bit of the grunge scene but I was like, oh, listen to Metallica, listen to Slayer, listen to Anthrax. And they're going, oh, that's too heavy. But everyone was calling them heavy. So yeah. I think for me, again, back in the 70s, I don't, I, I don't really recall, I mean, apart from the punk scene coming through, I don't really recall really seeing that much of a scene. It was all just music, you know. It yeah. hadn't been subcategorised by then, you know, or put into genres. Yeah. To have more genres of genres and like, genres of like genres. I said, like I said in the last podcast <laughs> after um, Liberator, I was like, I can't really classify what genre they are, but you should never assume genre, because if you assume genre, you're going to upset someone. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, if it's alternative, I mean, well, yes and no, I mean, I, for, I listen to metal. Yeah. You know, um, 
you know, I mean, whether it's anthrax, whether it's system of a down, whether it's raw tomasi, whether it's mushuga, you know, yada yada, whatever, you know, I mean, it's all just metal. I mean, they mm. all have their own subcategories and subgenres and all the rest of it, but it's just metal. Yeah. No, I completely agree. And we found quite a common interest in Nine Inch Nails as well. Yeah. To be honest, when you told me you were going to the gig and I was a bit jealous on that, that one. That gig. Pardon? <laughs> that gig. <laughs> yeah. The, the one, the, the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah, that was an absolute belter of a show. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, 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 don't be. I'm, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to Ozzy Osbourne next anyway, so. Yeah, which I is couldn't, next I week. bring myself to that one. No, it's no. A, yeah, I suppose if you've seen him years ago. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, no, I've I've only ever seen him once, and that was Black Sabbath in 2016 at Download. Oh, uh, right. I, I walked out halfway through it, it was absolutely terrible. Yeah. And I think just of the, the last however many recent years, I don't think I've really rated anything that he's done that that much and i don't really rate his singing that much these days so i'm like meh you know i i, I don't need to pay in his pension fund no, no, no that's fair play um i i just have a an a vested interest because he is one of my idols oh but, absolutely but the only the only thing i will say is i went and watched their last uh, the black sabbath last gig to the to oh, the gig before the last gig and I thought all their new stuff was brilliant, but when he tried singing all the old classics that everyone knows, yeah. it was a bit of a letdown for me. Yeah, the, the whole, like I said, Download 2016 was a massive disappointment. I mean, I've loved Black Sabbath for oh, many, 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 many years. They're one of my favourite rock, metal rock bands, whatever. Yeah. I absolutely adore them, you know I mean? I, I can't think of a bad bad Sabbath album with Ozzy. And I mean, even going to Gillen and, and, and Dio, you know I mean? Yeah. Love and adore what they did as well, but I just, no. Nah. No, that's, that's absolute fair play to that one. So have you got any special mentions or more details that would be interesting about yourself? Me? That people um, don't know other than the alternative scene? Uh, I go mountain biking when I can. Um, All right, do you have a big interest in that? Yeah, I've, I mean, I've got, I built, built two mountain bikes. I mean, it's the proper kind of off roady kind of stuff up a hill, down a hill. Unfortunately, I've moved somewhere very, very flat. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm on the active lookout for trying to find um, somewhere where I can do myself some serious damage. Yeah, um, do you yeah. drive? Yeah, I've got the car. I mean, yeah. Canic Chase, I think. Because the Peak Peak District is not that far away, really. Yeah, but I need to find someone to, to go with, you know, and especially oh, right. when you're taking on something, you know, which is a proper hill, which, you know, coming downhill when there's rocks and boulders and stuff and things that are round and about, that, you know, I mean, you don't want to be lying there for maybe... No, you definitely don't. ...for someone to find you, you know. Um, but especially in the peaks, because there is no reception. Yeah, so, you know, um, hopefully find find someone. Work's been a bit intense, you know, I mean, being the first year in, so, I mean, I've not been able to sort of, like, uh, try and explore it as much as I, as yeah. I can, but, um, yeah, I'd like to. Um, I'm very sure if you go on Facebook, you probably find a mountain biking group. Yeah, I mean, there's, 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 there's ones groups for everything called now. the Outlaws, which... I'm sure I'm not getting confused with the biker uh, fraternity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so have you been doing mountain biking for... I took it up about four years ago. Um, so it's not a long-term thing? No, from... uh, well, it's going to be a long-term thing. A friend of mine, you know, I bought a new mountain bike. You know, I was just trying to keep fit, just going up and down the local sort of like cycle path. And he just said, oh, come with us to Glen Tress, which is a, a proper, proper, um, gnarly, I can, see, I can use these words now, yeah. um, <laughs> mountain bike trail. Um, so they're all graded. You've got green, blue, red and black. Black's just like insane. It's just because of the distance of it. It's normally about 15, 16 miles oh, or right. more. Whereas the red, it's probably around about 12, 13 miles. But the, the disciplines are the same in the fact that uh, the complexities of some of the obstacles you hit will be the same. So there's me, never been off roading a, a mountain bike in my entire life, and he's just like, oh, come with us, we'll take you up. So we go to the top of the red run, climbed it, absolutely no bother. Takes on the first discipline, which is a drop in right at the very start. Got halfway down, loses my foots and pedals, off the bike, face and helmet down the gravel, 
snaps the pedal, hole in hand, hole in knee, uh, and that was my introduction to mountain biking. So and then you just, you know, because that's right at the very top, then I've still got about a, another seven miles to go coming down with half a pedal, bleeding from hand, bleeding from knee, um, managed three punctures later, fell off another twice, and uh, successfully got to the bottom. And you thoroughly enjoyed it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it never stopped me doing it, you know. So, uh, yeah, um, absolutely love it. Uh, and at the moment, I'm kind of trying to keep myself on the right track uh, to uh, train um, as a vocalist to sing. So um. I'd started singing lessons before I came down here. I don't play anything. I've always had, through my love of music, uh, especially, you know, the metal thing, um, I decided, why not? So, yeah, I'm trying to learn to sing at the moment. That That is very interesting. So are you going to take professional lessons for that? Well, yeah, I mean, they are actually professional lessons that I started taking. So, I mean, it's from an actual proper bona fide uh, vocal coach. And if I remember correctly, I think she's actually, or she's had dealings with or been friends with uh, Corey Taylor's uh, vocal coach. She's had somebody singing on, I hate to say it, it's either the well, well, X Factor or one of these ones. Yeah. Uh, the ones that they sit in a chair and spin round. Obviously, you can tell I, I religiously watch these programmes, but I can't even remember the name of it <laughs> that much. Uh, that <laughs> one, anyway. Bit, I know. So, yeah, so, so she, yeah, she's, she's actually had... Um, uh, somebody on that, I don't know to what great degree of success they had, but they made it to the television point anyway, so. Um, her name's Gillian Turnbull, if you're ever in Edinburgh, look her up, she is an absolute diamond. Oh, that's really cool. Right, what hurdles did you personally face, and how did you overcome them? With what? With anything you want. <coughs> is, there a pacif- oh. is there a specific time, I almost said Pacific then, is there a specific time that you can recall that you came across a big hurdle and overcame it? I think I think life's full of hurdles uh, on a daily basis, potentially. Um, I'm doggedly determined, and I always genuinely try and find a way to do something. Um, and I'm, I'm one who rarely gives up um, to a point of I can try things for too long. Uh, it's kind of wasting your time a little bit. Hurdles... Um, I think that, I mean, I couldn't give, I don't think, a, a, a direct, specific, but if there's something I have to do that's causing me a problem, I'll sit down and think about it and tackle it in whatever way I think is going to be the best. And oof, I think that'd be a bit. I mean, there, there are personal things going on in my life which are hurdles, but because of the personal nature of it, you know, in, involving uh, family and stuff, I can't really go no, into that. No, that's but. fine, that's fine. No, 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 if, if you're struggling with it, then there's no <coughs> problems. But, no, definitely, if you take everything head on, yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's the main, the main thing. Head, head on is, is genuinely my way of doing things, you know. I don't, I don't back down from anything. I take things on, you know. It's, there's always a way to achieve something. There's always a way to do something. You know, yeah. and it's not necessarily about winning or it's not necessarily about doing something to the best. It's just about making sure that, you know, if there's something you want to tackle, that you can tackle it. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, learn from it as well. You know, if it's if it's something uh, you struggle with, then, you know, learn. Learn from it. Learn if it represents itself or turns itself up again. That you know you know how to do it, or you, you've done it before, and you can you can potentially find a different or better way to do it. You know. Yeah, completely agree with that. Strive, achieve. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll bring this first part of the podcast to a close. So take a breather for a second, if you're right with that. Yeah, grand old. And don't forget, if you want to listen to some music, you actually have to listen to the full podcast on your favourite podcast player. So go check us out at Knott's Rockcast. Right, welcome back to the second half. I've got Big Bob J. Anderson mm. <laughs> from the Tap and Tumbler. Waves again. <laughs> <laughs> audio, <laughs> audio descriptive. <laughs> I think that's what we were looking for in the first one. Yes, possibly. Not, not, not signing, yes. audio descriptive. <laughs> Nods in agreement. 
<laughs> right. Since you've been here, what do you love and enjoy about living here? That's if you do. Um, well, I definitely don't not love it. Um, oof. Again, you know, I mean, the, the people have been great. Um, I also love the fact that, you know, I mean, a street away, I've got Rock City, you know, a, a legendary venue um, in the UK, which, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd heard about Rock City back in the 80s. Um, so you've got that, and then you find out, you know, you've got a, another cute little venue stuck on the side of it in the rescue rooms. Yeah. So you've got everything you need here. Um, the, the subculture, the alternative scene, although, you know, I'm still finding my way through it and finding out about it, because, I mean, you've got all, all loads of satellite things going on. You, like, have gigs at the gate, the gigs at the maze. Um, there's, you know, I mean, other things at the uni. I can't remember the, where they go. Uh, the, I believe the it's the loft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And other places, I mean, you've got, like, the Phil Core uh, putting on gigs here, there, and wherever. So, I mean, but then you saw, like, you walk through the city... And the amount of people you see who would, you know, guilty by association, maybe, assume to be of the alternative scene. Yeah. You know, it, it seems to be very thriving, and I think that's absolutely fantastic. So I, I genuinely love that. I mean, that in itself for me has kind of bolstered the decision to come down here. Yeah. Because it is much more thriving as a community of people into the alternative scene. Because as we as we were talking during the break, it you're you're from what I can see, you're a big goer to gigs and stuff. Yes, I think there's not one gig that I've wanted to go to that you haven't been there so far. <coughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so I mean, uh, this almost year that I've been down here. I mean, so my first ever gig at Rock City, my first ever gig at the Rescue Rooms, first ever gig in Birmingham, first ever gig in Manchester. Been to gigs down in London because it's just an hour and 45 minutes on the train, you know. Yeah. I mean, all these things are just so instantly accessible. So, where you didn't, sorry, we had a band doing a UK tour that didn't go above Birmingham or Manchester or Newcastle, yeah. But then you, you, you find that you've actually landed somewhere where you are almost in the epicenter of all gigs uh, that come to the UK. You know, so and you're lucky enough to be running one of the pubs closest to the Rock City. Yeah, but I mean, like I say, I mean, if if they don't come to Nottingham, I mean, it's not like Leeds is far. It's yeah. not like Leicester's far. It's not like you know, I mean, Sheffield, Manchester, and these are all places that you know, respectable touring bands go to. Yeah, as part of their UK tour, you know. So, yeah, it's great, absolutely fantastic. You know, I mean. Um, I got a big gig goer before I came down here. Yeah. But much more limited, or you would have to travel so much further afield. Yeah. You know, like the amount of times I've had to go to gigs in London because that's the only show they're playing. Yeah. You know? Or, and I suppose from Scotland, that's quite a trek. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's not just down the road, you know? So, meh. But yeah. here, everything feels just up the road or down the road. Oh. Um, usually I ask people to tell a story or myth about knots or talk about something locally interesting, but did did you want to tell us a story or a myth about anything? Yeah, Robin Hood didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. Yeah, you know, I mean, Little John was, was actually really little, you know, I mean, he wasn't tall at all. Uh, Will Scarlet never wore red in his life. <laughs> It's all fiction made up, made up by Hollywood. Yeah, made Marion was actually French. <laughs> Fair enough. Right, seeing as you've been here only a little time, what is your most favourite part of Notts or Nottinghamshire so far? Uh, Tap and Tumbler. <laughs> uh, Rock City. Uh, Barbarito. I uh, love the Barbarito. Oh, love I love the their, I love love their burritos. Now. Absolutely. Um, Annie's Burger Shack. Um, there's a, you know, I mean... And there's, there's enough pubs for me, you know, I mean, if I want to escape and get out of the way, yeah. you know, for a pint, or just, just you know, like I say, be out of the way, you know, you have everything you need, you know, like I say, if you have to go and buy something, I mean, you walk out the door, you're at the square in any direction you want, you'll probably have a shop that you need to go to, yeah. that, that you're looking for, I mean... As apart from Maplins center. now. Hmm? Apart from Maplins Apart now, from so. Maplins, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's maybe there's a, a, 
a hole in the market for you then, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> that is something that, again, just living here, you find so many little details out about this place, hence why I'm doing this podcast. Um, if you listen to some of the places that people have suggested about, you know, there's so much so close that I'm surprised you actually haven't found anywhere to go mountain biking that's really close so far. Yeah, well, uh, I, I think, that, like I said, the, the only closest decent place that I can think of that's an actual, you know, maintained run is uh, Canic Chase, and that's about uh, an hour and 15, an hour and a half's drive away. Yeah. So, I mean, when you kind of like get to that point, I mean, you're having to... Uh, Take in three hours travel, you yeah. know, there and back, you know, uh, on top of the time you want to spend having fun, getting dirty, and hurting yourself. Yeah, and the risk of actually not being able to drive back, I suppose. <laughs> Believe it or not, I've had that down here. Uh, smashed my ribs up at um, Nottingham Pines. Sorry, Sherwood Pines. Yes. Um, and ended up coughing up a bit of blood from the lungs and then phoning Elaine saying I'm driving back to A&E. See you in a bit. Oh, right, fair enough. <laughs> uh, that is the one place I actually haven't been to Sherwood Pines. It's flat. And I used to go past there every day on the bus. Lots of trees. Yeah, loads of trees. Pines, I believe. Yeah, yeah, could be, could be. <laughs> could, could be the name. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, just up the road is Ollerton, so then uh, that's where I used to live. So oh, go past know? on the bus. Cool. You, you'd see the entrance to it. They even hold gigs there sometimes. Yeah, which I think is weird. <coughs> they had um, what, Paloma Faith, Gal- Gary Barlow, and the likes of there last year. I think some big. So they're keeping all the crap it. music in the woods where we can't hear them? Yes, where there's a potential. Uh, <laughs> a summer like last year, I mean, heaven forbid there might have been a forest fire. <laughs> and, and <laughs> Fair play. Um, do you have a treasured musical object? It doesn't necessarily need to be an instrument. Yes, um, I've got uh, through Mole, one of his engineering type friends, who's now become a tour manager. He sent me a whole load of uh, plectrums. Oh right. Um, from like the Faith No More, Halloween, Bad Company, uh, to name but a few. I have an autographed Dave Murray wristband from 1985 or six, I think it was. I think it was the Somewhere in Time tour, Somewhere on Tour. Oh, right. Um, and I have, although it's not really anything musical, I've got a, a, a painted Mike Patton wallet. Oh. So, yeah, uh, I got that from my ex-wife. Mike Patton? Mike Faith No More. Come on, man. Oh, right, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah hang okay. your head in shame. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I'll hang my head in shame. Um, I only own most of their albums. <laughs> oh, I've got a, although I suppose it technically belongs to the pub, I've got one of the Eddie Trooper um, hand pump thing. Oh, right. Things. Oh, cool. Do you not serve Trooper, then? Well, we do. Uh, when we've got um, delivery issues with it, whereby they want to deliver to us where we have to offload everything ourselves, and when they take things away, they want us to, well, load everything for them in a pallet covered in cling film. So they're just having a lorry driver turn up yeah. and not... Yeah. And not Drayman? Yeah. Wow. That's it's, it's, a, it's a courier, so... I'm having, I'm going to have to work out how we get around that because it's a great product to have. Yeah. And it sells very well for us when we have it. I will ask some other people that are in bars if you want. Yeah, I mean, I That's think these, I think the sales has, has it. I'm not sure. But all yeah, the sale on, definitely has it. All depends on who, yeah, it all depends on who your supplier is. I mean. Well, yeah, you're tied to Green King here, aren't you? So, yep. yes. Aye. What are they like to work for? Hmm? What are they like to work for? Is Green this, King. Is this the first time? or No, like I say, I mean, well, I originally started working for Bellhaven, um, who were bought by Green King probably about 12 years or so ago now, maybe even longer than that. Um, you know, they put money in the bank from every month, which I'm, I'm grateful for. Um, having fun. Yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> The, to be quite honest, they're the same as any company, any big company you can work for. They have their way of doing things. They want them done that way, and you can argue your case. 
Yeah. You know, they'll listen to you, but that doesn't necessarily mean they'll change anything. It's a bit of a challenge when you run a rock bar and you are completely outside their comfort zone of what they gen- generally do as a business. Yeah. So all the marketing that comes down is for all your high street pubs. They have virtually, in fact, they have zero marketing for this bar. So over the last, probably saw, you might, have, might not have saw on Facebook, I've gone and got myself Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going oh, to start right. trying to sit down and, and design yeah. the things for marketing that this pub needs. Mm. And I think, you know, I mean, potentially in the past, I think that's maybe where Craig was quite good at things, you know. Yeah. I mean, some of the things you see, he's either known what he wants and he's got someone he knows to do it or he's, he's something he can do himself. So. Yeah. So that's, 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 I do all, all my own marketing and I have since all the different sort of ventures I've gone into or ventures I've tried to help out with. I learned it when I actually was learning IT as a kid, so it was one of those <coughs> yeah, I mean, things that a... you could slowly pick up and you realise, oh, I can stick a picture on another picture. and Yeah, I mean, I've got the kind of programming IT kind of background from when I was trying to not be a barman, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think we actually used Adobe back in about 1995, 6, yeah. um, where, you know, it would be sort of like, picture manipulation, so to speak, but because some of the things that Adobe have, have downloaded has certainly looked familiar. Yeah. But it's just going to be a trial and error. But then I've got a, a friend up in Edinburgh who's a, a bit of an expert in Adobe, and she said, it will make you cry. Yeah. Like, okay, that's a challenge. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think I've touched Photoshop in years now because I use what's known as GIMP. Right. It's an open source, basically Adobe Photoshop, but open source, so it's free. Yeah, fair enough. It's not the fact that it's free, the fact that it's open source and it's, it. you know, you give back all the information possible, you know, this customer experience thing. Oh, it's a, so, ah, okay. So is it like peer-to-peer then? Or? Um, no, it's just downloaded straight off um, SourceForge. All right, okay. Yeah. But no, it's learning that was, was a difficult thing. But doing album covers... Right. For, when, for when I was trying to start my solo career um, a few years back, it was doing uh, album covers and trying to get pictures and then get words on top. I was more used to um, publisher, right? So I found that a lot, <clears throat> lot easier to use. I, I don't see myself being, you know, uh, that technical. Whether it's just like, here's an offer, there you go, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Flyers yeah. or you know, this is the bands we have on this month, kind of thing. Yeah. So. If I can get the, a handle on it, you know, then, you know, you can you can just put flyers out for a month, you know. Yeah. That's absolutely brilliant. So have you got much coming up in the way of bands and <coughs> We're booked nights? up. Friday nights are booked up for the entire year. Friday nights are booked for the entire year? Yes. Wow. Well, I was kind of led to believe that's the kind of thing, you know. I'm starting to get pestered by bands probably about September last year. Yeah, you know, uh, and then I put a Facebook post up, and I, I have to apologise to people. Sometimes I put posts up, but you get that many hits for things, you're getting that many messages, you're getting that many emails. It's not that I don't want to get back to people. Sometimes it just takes too much time to get back to people. So I'm looking for bands for a Saturday night. You know, I mean, yeah. like more uh, contemporaries, to like you know, the year two thousand onwards. Yeah. If it's going to be covers, something that'll suit. You know, potentially a younger, younger generation. Time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Friday nights are absolutely brilliant, and the people that support it are absolutely, you know, fantastic. And they support it really well. And, I mean, this year it looks like we're uh, branching out. There's going to be a much bigger variety of bands playing on the Friday night. Oh, that's good. So we're getting bands playing who've never played here before. I mean, Crazy Diamond were on at the weekend, and they were, they were fantastic. So, what sort of genre? Are um, they? they were doing the classic rock stuff, but I mean, not your run of the mill, not the stuff that you would hear maybe in or twenty other cover bands playing. Yeah. You know? So it was much more expansive, and it turns out the uh, guitarist and singer uh, is a singer for Hell. Oh, yeah. So uh, that was like, hey, here we go. You know, we've got a bona fide star in the bar. Oh, brilliant. Know? Yes, I mean, and I was just like, hey, I've got a Hell CD upstairs. Yeah, CD, that's a little plastic thing you put in a player. 
not digitally downloaded or whatever, you know, just in just in case there's any youngins out there. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do, I do rate the podcast explicit, so it does come up saying you should be, you know, parents' permission sort of thing. I'm guessing because. I have to rate it that because we're on Spotify, yeah. we're on iTunes, yeah. we're on Google Podcast. I want to get us on YouTube. Right. But like yeah, we yeah. were talking before the interview, with this Article 13 yeah. stuff coming out, there's no point me starting it for it to suddenly not be a thing. Yeah. So... If, if I mention technology that the youngins might, you know, not be aware of, I'll try and explain it as best I can. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I'll go as far back as a mini disc player or a Walkman, but you know, you never know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so and then, and um, yeah, so I mean, even I think we're, I'm going to try and look at sort of getting original bands in on the on the Saturday night act as well. So a combination, That'd be good. combination of originals and uh, covers, and then uh, invariably because it's Saturday night, we have our DJs in uh, from ten o'clock onwards then as well. Yeah. Um, Samar is doing a kind of, it's like a karaoke with a, a full backline. So he's got a full live band where they'll pick out, um, he's picked out however many songs with, I think, rotating musicians potentially. Um, yeah. So basically it's an opportunity to, it's basically a jam session to a point. So I think, yeah, there's, I think there's, I've seen, seen him post about it. it yeah, is. there's a set amount of songs that they will play that are rehearsed. Then yeah. I think after that, uh, then it can actually be just become a jam session in itself. I wanted to call it jam and cheese, but, you know, he's gone for something else. But, you know, there could be a popular vote on that one. Feel free. <laughs> check, check Facebook now for the poll. Should it be called jam and cheese? <laughs> or whatever, or the, the, the tap, tap, and tap jam night, you know. Um, so so cheese, the noise jam and cheese. So it's called jam and cheese, and everyone that turns up is the crackers. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And I think that pretty, that would reasonably sum up the night because I mean there'll be plenty of cheese to listen to. They're having a jam, and everyone's going to be crackers anyway because it's two year bomb revival. No, um, <laughs> shameless plug. Um, well, fair enough. <laughs> it's your podcast. You can talk however you want. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so, I mean I think that's going to be like. Uh, once every two or three months, but hopefully through popularity it'll pick up. Yeah. Um, you know, I've suggested to Samer that on that night it'd be nice maybe if we could sort of like um, have something like a, a guitar clinic or a, a bass clinic or a drum clinic where, you know, I mean, somebody who is, you know, a, a master of their, you know, instrument, you know, um, right could then have like a, an open session with people who are maybe just taking it up difficulty with technical stuff or what you yeah. know where they can sit and talk about what what effects they use what pedals they well, use that's something, that's something as i said to you before the podcast i i make cables as my day job yeah so that's something quite interesting yeah i mean i, I don't think I, I don't know if it'll if it'll go down that road but i mean certainly when summer and i talked about the initial idea with Sam or Sam or came to me with the initial idea I should say. Yeah. I made that kind of a suggestion and you know, he seemed pretty pretty in tune with that one, so whether that happens or not, I don't know, we'll wait and see. I mean I'm still yet to pin him down for a recording on the podcast. He did say he wants to get on it. So yeah, I mean, well you've up got, for that. You've got the likes of Jordan from Evil Scarecrow as a drummer. I mean you've got um I can't remember his name but the the dude that, that does the guitar with Pope Stars, the uh, the, the ghost cover band who plays yeah. in uh, Cradle of Filth. You know, I mean, so, I mean, there just seems to be a wealth of knowledge yeah. and a wealth of musicians in Nottingham and, and around. So, you know, why not sort of like have a collective where people can help each other out? You know, I mean, it's, it's all about getting better, isn't it? It's all about, you know, improving or getting the thing you love uh, yeah. and getting better at it, you know I mean? And the whole, so like, if the people have a jam at the end of it, you know I mean? You might get people that click, that enjoy playing together and can go off and form their own band and who knows, you know, after that. No, I think that's a brilliant idea. This is something that I'm trying to say, that I'm talk in talking about with um, a friend is because I'm doing not so much band stuff, we're doing more professional audio. 
everybody sat in their own little home studio or they sat at home on the internet talking and there's no social. Yeah. Um, me and him were talking together and we were going, we like talking about gear and we were thinking about setting something up to be a gear professional. Gear as in equipment, not as in substances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Studio gear. So, you know, a proper geek fest, as it were, of people yeah. that are in into the gear, not so much the musical. Well, everyone's into the music, yeah. but, yeah, so we so watch this space because I'm going to be setting up something like that. So. Yeah, cool. That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. So we will be checking out venues. And I think the thing is that I said to someone, I don't really want to just do it at one venue. If I'm going to do something like this, it's going to be once a month, maybe once every other month. But I'm going to do it at different venues. So if we're getting together and networking, then we should be doing it at different venues. Yeah. Sounds reasonable. You know, dragging yeah. a crowd of people who are going to drink coffee and orange juice after spending 12 hours in the studio. Yeah. You know, <laughs> landlords love that sort of oh, thing, absolutely. don't they? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, one glass of water, please. Two straws. Uh, okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think, I think that is an absolute brilliant idea. That's something <clears throat> that definitely is moving forward in the way of entertainment nights. Yeah, I mean, I think... the jam uh, session. It's a great idea that Sam has come up with. I mean, if I could... You know, if, if someone said entertainment-wise, you know, I mean, what was something you would love to do? But I would say it'd be uh, Rocky Oki with a, a full live backline, you know yeah. I mean? So there was one, there used to be one up in Glasgow. Um, again, it, it, it's all your sort of like, they would have to pick a, a song from our books. I mean, it's not just like a case of they know every single song on the planet. Yeah, I then mean, it just you, becomes karaoke. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you, you know, if you had a band who maybe had a repertoire of 50 plus different songs, yeah. you know, that they could rotate or change or adapt and develop, you know, from week to week, you know, drop songs in, yeah. drop songs out, so it continually evolved and changed, you know, and then you get some uh, aspiring youngster or old age, you know, grabbing the mic and having a belt out to a full live backline. I think that would be great fun. You know, yeah. with a band sort of just playing little sort of like um, fellas in between, you know? Yeah. If I could, I would I would love to do something like that. No, oh, that sounds absolutely brilliant. That's definitely moving forward with things. Email the pub, folks. Yeah, no, if, if you want to get in contact with... If you want to get in contact with Bob, then you can go on to Facebook. I'm going to put the link in the show notes for the Tap and Tumblr. I don't think you want your personal Facebook on there, do you? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I do actually get uh, messages on my personal Facebook from bands, from people trying to do bookings. It's not my favourite thing, but if it comes if it comes to my um, personal, then I have a choice whether I indulge it or not. Yeah. Um, some I do answer, some I don't answer. It's as simple as that. You know, I mean, I'm not disrespectful to anyone in any way, but... You know, if I don't get back to you, it's simply because either you're, I'm busy doing personal things or I've looked at your link and it doesn't suit me. Fair enough. You know? But the best way to get in contact is through the Tap and Tumblr Facebook page then, I'm guessing. I would actually say probably the best is through the pub email because I'm on the email all the time and I can't necessarily be on the pub Facebook all the time. Right. What's you know, your email address? It's uh, 7050 at greenking.co.uk and the green has an E, so it's G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E that's fine. And as always, that's going to be in the show notes. Basically, you go onto the Knots Rockcast website yeah. and you click on Robert J. Anderson in the Tap and Tumblr yeah. and then the link will be as you scroll down. Yeah. Just don't get mardy if I don't get back to you. I'm learning, I'm learning the lingo. Biz, biz, biz. <laughs> All right, Doc. Um, right, name your most influential band or artist. Oh, easy. Faith No More. Yeah? Oh, all the way to the bank. Easy. Absolutely. Um, fell in love with them as soon as I heard them, and that was pre-Mike Patton. Uh, so when they still had Chuck Mosley singing for them, uh, absolutely adore them. Uh, a band that just always surprises you. You know, it's a shame they're not doing anything anymore. Although I don't think they're going to do anything anymore, that is. Um, yeah. You know, they had a, 
they want, it's called a hiatus, but they actually split up for, I think, something like 17 years and then came back in 2015, I think it was, Yeah. Uh, with a new album. Um, but, they, I mean, they'd been doing, they, they got back together in 2009 and it was just like touring the old stuff. It was basically just, you know, a greatest hits tour, really, at the end of the day. But it gave us an opportunity to get to see them again. Um, Mike Patton, as far as I'm concerned, pound for pound, is the best vocalist on the planet. I don't think anyone can touch him. Billy Gould on bass, the driving rhythms that he gets, you know what I mean? Mike Borden on drums, you know I mean? Good enough to drum, drum for Ozzy, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think he might have even sat on Sabbath at, at some point, but... Yeah, Roddy Bottman on keys and, you know, uh, now John Hudson on guitar, but, you know, back then it was uh, Jim Martin and just a collective of guys who didn't, didn't necessarily get on all the time, but, well, the music they came out with. Progressive, evolving, never stuck to, a, you know... A, a trend. A, a for, yeah, a trend or a formula for anything. Yeah. Every, you know, every album is just full of conflicting, polar opposite, bipolar songs. Yeah, and you know? that, that's why I've got nearly every one of their albums as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know the uh, who, who they were, <laughs> obviously. Been caught out on that one, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, and Patton's gone on and, and done so many other things, and so has so the rest of the band, you know, and I mean, all in their own merits. Have you got a favourite song? <laughs> Changes every day, um, probably. No, that's fair enough, uh, all of them. Then. I would have to say probably off of... The King for a Day, Fool for a Lifetime album. Yeah. And it's probably Just a Man, because that is the song that uh, me and my daughters used to sing together when it, when it came on in the car. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and they would sit just sometimes not singing, just, you know, looking at me singing in, in absolute awe of their dad, you know. Um, so, yeah, probably that one. Um, if I was to pick a band outside of no more, it'd probably have to be Mr. Bungle, another Mike Patton project, because they are just insane. That is, that's really funny, I, I haven't thought about Mr. Bungle in years. They are it must mad. have been secondary school was the last time uh, I really heard, I really listened and heard that music. They, they only did the three albums, but I mean, every album is so schizophrenic, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that, that, you know, as a band, I mean, you'd want to feed it medication. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that comment about music in my life. I've there heard some of the weirdest comments about some really far out music, like, oh, it makes me feel high or it makes me feel deep, but I want to feed the medication. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. I, I could genuinely argue sometimes that I might be a bigger Mr. Bungle fan than a Faith No More fan, but yeah, know, I, it's a question I've never been able to answer. I mean, but I would say on on the general whole, it's it's Faith No More. Fair enough. Can you name one thing you're excited about in the upcoming six months? Yes. Okay. <laughs> And what are they? Uh, well, I mean, uh, there's there's a few things. Uh, people are probably sick of hearing me going to Hellfest. Right. Um, not Bloodstock. Not Bloodstock, <laughs> Hellfest. And, and then luckily enough that they announced that uh, their uh, Notfest is using the Hellfest stage set up for Notfest the day before Hellfest. I'm going to see how many times I can get Hellfest in here. <laughs> um, okay, keep in count. So yeah, uh, uh, a week in France and then coming back to a week off work after that I used to recover from the week in France at Hellfest. Um, and uh, there's a good chance I'm getting married this year. So uh, yeah, there's Ooh. that. Yeah, I mean, we're kind of like, we've, we've, we've talked about it. I mean, we are, we are going to get married, uh, myself and Elaine, but it's just a question of whether it's going to be this year or next year, um, just with sort of like getting cash together and the likes of... Um, it's not cheap. No, it's not. Because I did it last year and it cost... Mm. It, we did it on kind of a budget, so yeah. we, we tried keeping everything low-key 
and it still cost us <laughs> an arm and a leg, really. And in, in fairness, I mean, weddings aren't really too expensive. I mean, obviously, you can make them as lavish as, as you like. It's, it's the divorce that costs you all the money, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I'm going to skip that one <laughs> and done. just go straight to prison. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no well, you know, it'll be my second time round, but hey ho. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, anything else? Oof, just lots of gigs, I guess. Yeah. As usual. Brilliant. Yeah. You, I know you said earlier about the lead singer of Hell coming in. Yes. How many famous people have you met since being in this pub? Um, oof, well. Or how uh, many have walked in and you've been serving? I, I've not actually had anybody famous when I've been working that I know of. Oh, um, right. Did, 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 uh, Matt met the guitarist from Ministry. Okay. Then there was the dude from Journey, the singer, what's his name, uh, was in. Don't ask oh, me. No, sorry, Mr. Big. Oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, Kim would know. She's all about that kind yep. of stuff. However, in the last, since I've been in Nottingham, yep. I've met, uh, who have I met? Billy Gould from Faith No More. Wow, first time? Yeah. Wow. We do, I get, actually I'm lucky enough that I can get random little chats with them on Facebook Messenger. Yeah. And he's quite a busy man, so you know, you can sort of like ping him something, you either get an answer or you don't, you might just get a thumbs up. Yeah. You know, you might get nothing. Yeah. Know, but, and at the same time, met uh, Kim Thiel from Soundgarden. Wow, okay. <laughs> now Somebody bit, I'd bit never away on that imagined meeting. Um, and they had with them the singer from uh, Zen Gorilla, who has honestly got one of the best blues vocals I, I think I can ever recall hearing. He's probably right up there with the likes of Billy Gibbons, you know, I mean, yeah. he's got just an amazing voice. So that was when they were doing the MC50, which is the MC5 50th anniversary tour of Kick Out The Jams. Mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing. Mm. And uh, prior to that, when I was up in Edinburgh, I think it was, was it September? I think it was September. I w there was a, a jazz ensemble, a three-piece saxophone, drums, and uh, double bass, which was um, with Mr. Bungle's bass player, uh, what's his name again? Oh, Trevor Dunn. So I met him, got a chat with him, and got talking to him about Mr. Bungle, and you never know, there could be a fourth Bungle album. Yeah? Yeah, because I kind of like was giving him a hard time saying, come on, man, you can't leave it like that. This story isn't finished. Yeah. I've well, done three albums, and there's, there's so many more albums in you guys. Yeah. And just like, well, could happen. Could be happening. No, that's cool. Yeah. Um, cool. So, yeah, but I, other than that, um, I think I've, I've met quite a few famous for reputation maybe in, in yeah. Nottingham you know I mean like everyone knows Mole I mean you know you would have to yeah. say he's a, a a local celebrity you know I mean goes jet setting with all these bands around the world you know I mean I think he's been to South, he's been on a world tour more or less with C yeah I'm an idiot I've yeah. completely even forgotten to actually turn around to him and go do you want to yeah. get on a podcast there you go <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, I think I could coax some good stories out of him. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I would say he'd probably have the most stories he could tell about anything, I suppose. Yeah. Cool. Right, I'm going to go to our last question. Okay. In your opinion, what makes the not alternative scene great? I know you've probably said it over and over in this. Um, it, it's the fact that, I mean, it, uh, it doesn't feel cliquey. You that know? is interesting. Edinburgh, to a point, or whether it's just because of people I know or don't know, I mean, if you don't know people, it can feel cliquey. Yeah. But working on the bar, I suppose it, it makes it easier for me to, to know people as an outsider. So it doesn't feel cliquey. I mean, as much as you see groups of people apart, you know, I mean... Yeah. Nobody looks like they're trying to do out anyone, you know, nobody looks like they're dressing to one style of music. Yeah. They just dress how they want to dress, alternatively, do their own thing, get on with it, and, and, and that's it. And I mean, when you saw, like, the, when the taps kind of jump in, you know, and you kind of like just look around, 
and you, you don't really see any great separation or segregation or whatever, you know, you just see a whole load of people having a good time. That are alternative. That are alternative, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, even the suits and the likes of the come in, which you can't avoid. Mm. You know, I mean, people want to come in and spend your money, they're not in the rock scene. Great. Yeah. You know, because to me that says, you know, you're, you're running a bar that, that's safe. Yeah. Where anyone can feel comfortable. So I might crack on, you know, I mean, you might have people as though, you know, what are they doing here? Well, honestly, well, they're spending their money. That's what they're doing here. Yeah, they're paying your pay. Yeah, they're not annoying <laughs> you. They're not doing anything. You yeah. know what I mean? There's been virtually no trouble at all whatsoever in being, in being here. You know, and not having to rely on anyone in any capacity to, uh, to, for help out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which I'm quite happy with, you know. So, I mean, it's like, no, it's good. Um, it's just, it just seems so well supported. Yeah. I mean, and then you've got, what, something like 95,000 students in, in the city. And we get, you know, one of the rock societies coming in here and having a great time, you know. So, I mean, they just seem, it's much more a party city, it seems. Yeah. You know? so, I mean, people want to come out, they want to enjoy themselves, you know. It's not the most affluent cities, you know, there's not a lot of money in this city. It appears, or so we're told in the press, at least anyway. Right. But, you know, uh, people pay their bills, they put food on their tables. They get themselves in and out of work, and then they want to come, go out and enjoy themselves, and more power to them. You know, it's 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 good. The alternative scene, you'll probably see more people dressed alternatively in Nottingham than you would in Edinburgh. Okay. You know, I mean, just I will actually find, life. I will actually find that out this year, because me and the wife are going up to Edinburgh for our first year anniversary. Yeah, cool. Black, so. Black Bull, Bannerman's, Opium. Okay, I'll have to write them down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure I'll have edited this edited this podcast before I before I go, so I'll write them down and I will be dragging her along. They're they're free play. I mean, so the black bull I used to manage anyway. Obviously, it won't be the same because I'm not there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bannermans, I mean, they they they're probably you know they're big on the the, the live music scene. They've got their own kind of room off. Uh, where the bars are, which has their, their own stages, their own yeah. stage and lighting and in-house PA and, you know, all that kind of, all the stuff you need. And they get, you know, I mean, they have Warrior Soul playing there, they have Jizzy Pearl playing there, they've had, uh, you know, uh, a lot of big names from a, a bygone era back in the 80s are still touring around the solo artists playing there, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's quite a decent scene in there. And I would, anyone up in Edinburgh would definitely recommend going to, going to the, uh, the Bannermans, and the Black Bull, if you like bourbon, yeah, exactly the same jukebox as we've got here. You cool. know, friendly and... That, there's a rumour I wanted to hear. When what? you when you turned up here, uh -huh. did you really wipe a load of crap songs off the jukebox? Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> because um, I can't say this word without saying the second word, so cover your ears, kiddies. Um, indie Pish. I hate, it's just, I, I, I think indie has no place in an alternative or rock bar because okay. it's effectively just guitar-driven pop music. Okay, that's, that's, that's fair enough. And I've got no shame in saying that. I mean, uh, I think Paul hates me for the fact that I took Oasis out of the jukebox. I can't see why that was a bad thing. Um, no, I can't see why that's a bad thing either. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, the, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy to put my hand up and say yes, I did stand at the jukebox with a key taking out as much of the stuff as I can find, and I'm still finding it to take it out. Yeah. It's a rock bar. This is what we do. No, that's absolutely brilliant. You know, if, if you want all the other stuff, there's other bars that'll play it. No, uh, no I must admit, that is that is fair play to you, because the last thing you want is Justin Bieber coming on when no one's put a quid in. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, it's, it's not going to be like that. I mean, it's just like your ocean colour cover scene, your soup dragons, your, you know, oasis, your... Coral, you know, all these kinds of bands. Yeah, your Brit like, pop. Yeah, they, they, they just don't have a, a place in a rock yeah. bar. I must admit, that's a bit different from what I'm doing with the podcast, because I've, I've called it Knott's Rockcast, but it is the alternative scene podcast. So I will be speaking with, obviously, landlords that I've yeah. done too now. I'll be speaking with different bars. I don't just do... Metal, don't just do rock. I'm going to be speaking with acoustic acts, singer songwriters. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but it's nice to hear that there is a place where you're not going to get a, too much of a crossover. I hate to say it, but I mean, there's been bars in Edinburgh 
which have, you know, out and out called themselves alternative, rock, metal, whatever you want to call it. Who, when you get to a certain time of night, so let's say, you know, you're at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, and all the surrounding bars are emptying, and you get all the, uh, I'm not going to pigeonhole, but, you know, um, polo, sh polo shirts and check shirts coming in with their skinny jeans on, um, and all of a sudden you're listening to Madonna. Oh. Why? You know, is it, what, 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 why is this evening happening? You know, I mean, you've had so, um, the mainstay of a metal crowd all, uh, in all night, and now you're being outnumbered by randoms and off the street, and you're pandering to their style of music. I'm like, well, why? Something but, I will never, ever bow down to. I mean, I'm, I, I'll religiously stick to what I do. Good. I, I'm, I commend you for that. And I think, as most people would say, they would salute you. Why, <laughs> thank you very much. Right, bringing the podcast to a close anyway. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to give a shout-out or a mention to? Um, good friend of mine, or has become a good friend of mine, Simon Tuckwell, has opened his own hairdressing salon on um, Parliament Street. Um, yeah. Can't remember the name. Well, I think it's called Tuckwell & Co. now. Uh, so get your undercuts there. Get your head shaved in, all the different shapes and styles that you want to carry on with your alternative lifestyle. All the colours under the rainbow. I'm not going to say he's going to be cheap, but, you know, uh, a stalwart of the but metal scene. But he's good. Scene. Hmm? But he's good. Yeah, a stalwart of the metal scene, and he is literally, he is genuinely at the top of his game. So, you know, somebody who supports alternative music, alternative bars in Nottingham, you know, here, Foreman's and probably various other places, you know, Go check him out. Go support local talent. Cool. Right. Thank you very much, Bob. You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very much, Knots Rockers, for listening to Knots Rockcast over YouTube. If you would like to check us out on your favourite podcast player, please search Knots Rockcast. And don't forget... If you're on social media platforms, give us a like, give us a share. You'll find us at Knots Rockcast. Anyway, till next time, keep it Knots, keep it rocks. Knots Rockcast is an association with Regular Riot. Knots Rockcast, the Knots Alternative Scene Podcast. And here is your host, Jeff O'D, bringing you everything Knots.